blockchain. We know that a lot of crypto is built on it, but it's not quite the same thing. Crypto is not blockchain because blockchain is blockchain, obviously, right? Wait, okay, what is blockchain exactly? Luckily, we've got Yai Finance's Brad Smith here to break it off for us. Brad, give us the skinny on exactly what blockchain is. Help us wrap our arms around this. You know, that's the key question that everybody is asking, especially after the Bitcoin white paper was published in 2008. We were also introduced at that time to a new technological protocol, the blockchain. And amid the crypto boom, as you were mentioning, Brian, conversations have run rampant in ways to try to explain what it is. So in the simplest terms that I can put it, I'll give this a stab as well. And here's how it works. To know what a blockchain is, first you need a block. A block has data about a transaction, such as the sender, the receiver, and the value. A block also has what's called a hash, which is essentially an identifier, okay? So you've got the data about the transaction and you've got the identifier. And that identifier for the block is what's used every time a new transaction is initiated. And those new transactions create the chain over time. So in plain terms here, think of the blockchain from the combination of blocks, similar to a digital shared document, perhaps. Any edits you make to that shared document will continue to be tracked with a detailed history of who the owner is, the date of the transaction, if you will, the time and the changes that were made with a unique identifier for every change of ownership as well. And so within all of this, what is on the blockchain? That is another major question, as so many things can be thrust towards this broader protocol as well at the end of the day. So Brad, what are the different types of blockchains? I mean, how do we differentiate them? Certainly. So there are four main different types of blockchains here, and one of them is the most popular, the public blockchains, completely decentralized. Anybody can join, kind of like a social media group with no approval necessary for entry. Think about Bitcoin or Ethereum or even Litecoin as well. And then you also have a private or managed blockchain, on the other hand. They usually have a central authority that decides who can be a node or a participant in that blockchain. And this is more common in some of the solutions that we've seen large entities creating. For instance, you've seen Amazon and IBM start to create their own blockchain solutions. And this really spells out how valuable this market could be in the future as well. Market size is anticipated to be worth $227.99 billion by 2028. That's from the $4.93 billion it was worth in 2021. And business executives are taking initiative to build solutions for their existing business practices based on the blockchain protocol. JP Morgan chairman and CEO Jamie Dimon most notably has historically bashed Bitcoin, but in his annual shareholder letter for 2022, he said decentralized finance and blockchain are real, new technologies that can be deployed in both public and private fashion, permissioned or not. He goes on to say very briefly here, we believe that there are many uses where a blockchain can replace or improve contracts, data ownership, and other enhancements for some purposes. However, it is currently too expensive or too slow to be deployed. And so with all of this thrust towards the broader blockchain solutions that can be moved forward from here and the significant pivot that we've seen in some industries, there's no question of the limitations as certainly as of right now, it doesn't seem like there are many. It's just a limitation of who can call themselves blockchain. Long Island Ice Tea, I think we remember a couple years back, that is certainly not a blockchain company. Oh my gosh, yeah, I could finance this. Brad Smith, thanks so much for the breakdown. Not gonna have an LIT at this hour at least. Uh, 